Should I just do voiceover? Just doggos? Are you so tired? <laughs> Thank you. This is our tennis ball for the day. Hello and welcome to the Plies and Hellhounds channel. We are a crafty puppy interrupted podcast coming to you from Central Connecticut. And this is the Rhinebeck outfit and purchase uh, episode. I think I'm giving up on numbering. I'm sorry if you can hear crunching. It's Iron trying to crush a tennis ball underneath my microphone. But it's not playtime. I'm working. You've been working all day. Yeah, it's only like 11 o'clock. We gotta do this. I'll take him a minute. <laughs> I will be going through what I wore and made for each day of uh, the Indian Tangled in New York Sheep and Wool Festival that was last weekend already and what I got on each day and um, I'm gonna try and put links to everything. I think everything's got links uh, to everything that I got. That way you can find it if you would like to. The only thing I'm not gonna show you is a couple stuff that Jake got and mostly the food because <sighs> there's only so much a bottle of hot sauce can do on the podcast but I will link to them in the show notes. So uh, let's get started with it. I should probably tell you who I am. <laughs> I am Gabby, I am your human host, and I am joined with Audrey on my lap. There we go. And oh, that was my ankle cracking. Iron is underneath the tripod trying to throw a tennis ball at me currently. Thanks, bud. You can find me everywhere online as Gabby Gales and all my hand dyed yarn at Plies and Hellhounds and pliesandhellhounds.com. So with that, let's, um, let's get started. So Friday was Indie Untangled. I spent most of the day in my wild joy. This is a new FO. Uh, I think almost everything's a new finished object. This is a design by Samantha Guerin Designs. I test knit this for her in my new fall uh, term collection. So the base I used is my Cecil base. It is 100% Superwash BFL Aran weight. Uh, and I used the colors, the main color is Leatherbound. The white cream is Ephemera. The orange is Ponkin. And the purple is Knight's Migrations. I did this on a US size seven. I knit the smallest size, but I do like a very form fitting sweater. She did design it to have, uh, I think like four to six inches of positive ease. I think if I were to do it again, I would go up a needle size, but I'm a-okay with the way this fits. I love it. I love the length. I love the sleeves. And this base, it was just so squooshy and fast tinted up. Um, this flew off my needles. I absolutely adore it. This is like my fifth time wearing it. So this was my knit for most of the day. It was like 75 degrees and we were in the sun. So I changed into my Pine Creek crop uh, around one o'clock. Oh bud. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do this. Are you so tall you're almost in frame? Why don't you go get a bone? Go with that, I made the York Pinafore by Helen's Closet. I'm gonna try and put some photos or footage of the whole thing up here because it's just gonna be close above my crotch. It was above my crotch if I stand up right now. Uh, I made this out of a dark brown black tartan, but it's got like one single sparkly orange thread going through it. I got the fabric, thank you. I got the fabric at Affordable Fabrics years ago, like two or three years ago now, I think, or four years ago, I don't know, pandemic times. Hi, bud. And I did the exact size. I believe I did the small size. Bud. I, I believe I did the size small for it and I didn't really change anything from the pattern except made the pockets inserts instead of on the outside of the fabric. And that's uh, basically it. I really love uh, the style of this. I wore my York pinafore literally until it shredded. So, I am super excited to have another one in there. So this was my Friday outfit. Um, it was just the dark folly aesthetic that I was going for. Uh, and I did get a lot of goodies. Um, some planned, some not planned. 
The first one being, not planned, but had to come home with me, is this mug from Idle Wild Clay. Oh. This was my one, um, vent, like, vendor shopping purchase. So the vendors and the volunteers get about an hour before the show starts to, um, go shopping. So we can go shopping instead of trying to escape during the show. And uh, this is this is what I followed me home. It's so good. I do want to get. Um, she does buttons. She does clay buttons, wood buttons, and antler buttons. So I do want to get some for. Um, I do want to get some of her buttons for the upcoming cardigans I have planned. I believe the only one I have like ready to go and have picked out is the Felix cardigan. And that's just a plain black yarn, so I feel like I can go a little bit crazy with the buttons. But yeah, I would, uh, I just, mm, I have been like filtering, I got two mugs, and I've just been like, in the morning I drink out of this, in the afternoon I drink out of the other one, and that's it. This is all I have now. No other mugs. I just, it's so pretty, and I just love holding it, and like, it fits in your hand really well, and it feel like, it feels good to hold, like, it's a good cozy, cozy mug. And now I'm going to very carefully put it down. Uh, the other things I got, new to me, dire. They were uh, across, like, the way from me. So I was watching uh, her show color just keep disappearing off of uh, the grid wall. And then for the last, like, section of the show, I saw a group of people head over there and I ran over because I was afraid they weren't gonna have any more. And this is Woolens and Nosh. And I got her indie colorway, which is Cornucopia. And it's this, like every other stripe is this beautiful dark purple. And then um, the rest are just all these colors and it's Targi and Nylon. And I've never knit with a Targi Nylon blend. I am so excited for these. I have had no desire to knit socks or self-striping socks or any socks or the socks I cast on two years ago for Jake's birthday that I'm literally on the second foot of. No desire, but I really, I, I might, I might cast these on. This might be my November socks. I don't know. Yeah, like I might, I know I should work on my own yarn during New England Fiber Fest, but I might just knit on these instead because obviously they match everything I have. Oh, I'm so excited. I am so excited. And like, it's so squooshy. So yeah, socks. Because that's all they need to be. I then ran way back over to Lambstring and picked out, I got three skeins of her um, Utopia DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino in her Buried Alive color. Just look at these little, oh, look at this dog hair, A. Eh? Hold on. Okay, look at these speckles. Oh, it is just the like warm, dark gray with ev like every single color imaginable inside. I think we're gonna do a cardigan or another pullover. Um, I saw, it was like a t-shirt style, I don't, it sounds weird, like a t-shirt v-neck style cardigan thing on Ravelry. Uh, I, I hope I saved it. If I did, I'll put it on the screen or in the show notes or something. But uh, I use that as guidance to get the yardage because I definitely want something short sleeve and cropped obviously but mm, mm, I love it I love it so much I'm so I just mm, yeah so that was that and the last <laughs> the last thing I got at indie um I wanted to get this colorway last Indie Untangled when we did the solely virtual one for Sam's Alder Grove pullover, but she only had it on her like on the Surrey base and this year she brought it in fingering. So I got three skeins of Rumor on her fingering weight base, which is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 
Uh, it is a two ply high twist. And I loved this so much in the Surrey base. I am so happy to get a sweaters quantity. It's just this beautiful like tan taupe, like warm sand base with hints of gold and browns and a little bit of like mauves and maroon and just mm, mm, mm. no idea what this is going to be yet. Not a single clue, but I have three skeins of a fingering weight and that is usually fine for me to do a pullover or a cardigan. I'm kind of on a cardigan kick, but I also kind of really want a pullover. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so it's just going to marinate in my stash for a little bit while I look for uh, projects. And uh, this is Lavender Loon Yarn Co. I don't know if I said that before. Uh, and this is, I did her slub base and her Surrey Alpaca is what I made my Alder Grove out of last year. And it was so good. So good. Her worsted weight base this year. I also wanted to like destroy that table. I was seconds away from buying everything I saw in her booth. Seconds. <laughs> what else? Okay, so that was Indian Tangled. We did a D-stash bar because we had like a bar in the house that we rented. So we did a D-stash bar for our Airbnb um, with everybody who stayed there. And I did get a couple things. A couple things did follow me home. Not many. Um, most just these two skeins of Olan in her mohair silk blend and the colorway is brackish. So I just got two skeins of these, not a clue what I'm doing with them, but the color called out to me. Maybe a sweater? Maybe I'll finally do that um, sweater that Pom Pom came out with like years ago, the purple one. I'll think of it. I'll think of it in like 20 minutes. Maybe? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I just couldn't let them not come home with me. And then I did also um, receive some fiber bits. I completely forgot what any of these are, but they're squishy and they're floofy and my friend made them and I'm very excited. I believe this is a fleece that she just got. I think this also might be a fleece that she has. I could be mistaken, <laughs> but I'm very excited to spin with these. Not a lot of info on this one. I've just been like literally doing this for a week because I just leave it out on my coffee table and I walk by and I passed it. That was Andy Untangled. Jake did not get anything at Andy, although he was very helpful throughout the day. He had his eye on some self-striping yarn, but they sold out before he could get over there. So um, Friday over, let's do some Saturday things. Saturday. 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 For the makes. Start there. I made for my Saturday sweater the Alaska pullover. Please hold. Alaska pullover by Camille Descoteau. I'm so sorry for butchering that name. I'm not here to try. It's 2021. Uh, I did this out of lamb string yarns in the Leaky Cauldron and Apothecary colorways in her DK weight. I got this last year at Indian Tangled and I adore how this came out. It's so soft. It fits so well. It was such a fun knit. I did have a little bit of a yarn chicken game. I ran out of yarn around here and um, had a moment of panic. I messaged Lambstring asking if she was gonna bring it to Indy because I was like, figure the worst case scenario, I buy another skein and I knit it at Indy. Uh, she did not have this colorway. So I went digging, like digging through my stash to see if I had anything that looked like it just to get through the color work. And I found this wee little nugget. If I have the photo, I'll put it up the smallest like little nug of this colorway and it was just enough to finish the sweater. So it was a Rhinebeck miracle. It was meant to be. Um, yes, I loved it. I uh, did do the collar in the contrasting colorway because I ran out of yarn. So note to self, you just need more DK than you think. 
so I probably should have got more than three skeins of maybe I'll pair it with hand spun not the time but sir did you knock over my, my thing this is my sweater the skirt I did the um, modern fantail uh, Edwardian walking skirt by Scroop Patterns. I did it out of this, uh, I don't even know what kind of fabric it is. It feels like cotton, uh, like cryptician kind of thing. It was a bolt of fabric in my grandmother's basement when we went through it and she had a literal Joann's in her basement, but I have a whole bolt of it and I really like the way it feels. So I plan on making a ton of stuff out of it. Uh, I did, I believe, the small or medium, again, I uh, don't have it written down on the pattern what size, but it is the same exact size as my tartan one. Um, same length, I did not change a single thing. I thought about putting pockets in this one, but I just did not have the time to figure out pockets because you have to kind of like overlay them in the side panels. There's no side seam, like a, regular like half circle or um like rectangle shaped skirt so I didn't want to like have pockets like kangaroo pouch style or like it on like right on my butt um I do want to make a skirt like this with pockets in it I think that would be very handy it's just this is not that skirt it's not gonna be it so yeah, that, uh, this is my Saturday outfit. It was super comfy. I felt very flowy and witchy. And yeah, so uh, let's get into it. Just been it. Getting called, attacked by my dogs. Emotionally attacked. Saturday was amazing. I'm not gonna go into like a whole recap of everything. I have the Rhinebeck vlog. There is no talking in like any of the Rhinebeck section, but it was, it just felt really good to be back. It felt weird because like masks and like everyone was a little bit more, you know, um, which makes sense. I mean, I, I did go to the podcaster meetup, but I only stayed for about 15, 20 minutes and then it just got overwhelming. So, uh, Jake and I just started wandering around because I usually do the podcaster meetup at one o'clock on the hill for about an hour and then I go bury my face in the closest sheep I can possibly find but this year I just kind of looked at it and I was like I can't I don't have the mental capacity at this very moment to do it so I stayed for a little bit I had said hi to a couple people and then we were on our way so um Saturday we did some damage not shown Marvin the Roomba just started vacuuming. Please hold. Now is not the time. I'm working. Oh. As I was saying, what I don't have shown is I got a sweater's quantity of nightshades in the VCR colorway. I'll put a picture up here. This is a sweater's quantity for Jake. Uh, when I bought my nightshades two years ago, he saw this colorway and asked if he could have a sweater in it. So this year we got him that sweater. I don't have a pattern in mind. I'm thinking a cable -y pullover kind of thing. Um, we have been watching Sex Education on Netflix and he really loves Yoko's like style. So I maybe try and find like a sweater that Yoko would wear because he would just he would love that so much. Uh, that is in the mail, but it is not here yet because they had, uh, the boots were a lot smaller and they were more spaced out in all of the barns. So instead of bringing their supply of yarn like they usually do, they um, had a sample of each colorway mm -hmm. and you place an order with them and then they would ship it for free the next week. So I wasn't that mad I uh, didn't have to carry around nine skeins of a uh, DK weight for Jake, but it did. get super dangerous because I didn't have any yarn in my bag for a hot minute. Iron's got the zoomies. Oh, he's got them real bad. Audrey, can you go play with your son? <laughs> Afraid of the wire. Yeah, 
out. We're all, I mean, we're on Saturday. We only have two. Do you want to come up? Do you want to come on the seat? Come on. You want to come up? There you go. See? You're so tall. You got to sit up. Oh, good boy. All right. That entertained him for a full four seconds. Uh, yeah, so that was stop number one. We went straight there because I... Iron never instigates play with Audrey, and he straight up just knows Boomer in the eye. <laughs> I just think he's mad. We're going to um, a puppy friend's house to do a play date because um, I think one of their co-workers is just got a puppy and so I'm bringing Audrey over to help us socialize but Iron Iron can be a little bit much so he's staying home for it but now he's super playful by playful I mean they're just um clacking teeth together like piranhas can you do this in the living room <laughs> come on to cut my bangs so bad uh <laughs> as I was saying after we got Harrisville we popped over to the bookstore, which was its own building, which I kind of loved because I love the book alley, but it's always so hard to get in out of. So I'm hoping that's a thing that stays even post pandemic. I picked up a copy of Moon and Turtle by Kiyomi and Sashiko Bergen. Uh, this is from, I think, Pom is it Pom Pom like published it? Yeah, Pom Pom published it. Uh, I won everything in this book. I think the only thing that I like wasn't super jazzed for was like the hats, but I don't wear hats, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the main thing I wanted out of this book was this sweater. So I want this style, the crop of the long sleeves, because I'm predictable, but I would like it in this stripe pattern. The um, patterns, like directions themselves, is very much like a recipe situation. Like it gives you the yardage for each um, stripe pattern and style of body. Or they give you the body style. They give you the body style and I believe it uses about the same amount per color for stripe patterns. Is that a sentence? I don't know. Who knows? So they give you the directions and then they also have like separate directions per stripe pattern that you're gonna use. I also um, kind of love this, like kind of really wanna make one of these. I don't know, I'm just, I'm so excited for this book. Like I really want, I love this. I love the pullover version of it. You can't really see because it's a dark blue, but just the subtle cable down it. And I almost bought yarn for this, but. I, I just really enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited for this book. I um, started like following their designs on Instagram and then I saw that Pom Pom was doing a book with them and yeah, yep excited. So immediately after this, uh, I went to, I didn't even notice this, Jake pointed it out to me, the brown, brown bunny pottery has the cutest things like bowls, cups, which is like little animal faces, and um, just, I got a crow mug. <laughs> I love it so much. This was, they also had crow bowls and like little baby crow bowls. I almost got a bowl because I didn't think there was any mugs left and then Jake saw one more. So, oh, uh, I, I like, this is my afternoon mug. This is my morning mug and these are the only mugs I want now. I love them so much. Uh, I have been like watching their pottery for years and I've never 
saw anything that like I was like this is it like I'm, I'm gonna get it like the hedgehog stuff I love it I want it what am I gonna do with a hedgehog bowl <sighs> but a mug I mostly want their honey stuff too but like I don't I don't eat that much honey to justify getting a honey container I don't know so yeah I got this and and I love it with all my heart Maybe my crows will come back. Our next stop was actually for Jake. I don't have a picture of it here. It is in the vlog, but he got himself an alpaca wool uh, zip up hoodie. It's like hand farmed, but machine made. It was a handmade booth. He loved it. That was all him. He looks really good in it and it's super soft. It's so soft. He has been wearing that thing nonstop since we got back. While he was jacket shopping, I popped over to Into the World because I only have one braid of their fiber left and I love their fiber. I really need to cut my bangs. So I grabbed a braid of their Romney in the upside down. I think I've spun with their Romney before, but I'm not 100% sure. Is that what I have? No, I have their Gotland. I don't, maybe I've never spun with their Romney before. I have to go through my um, hand spun. But it's just these grays and purples and blues and greens and ugh. I really I went mostly off of the fiber and not so much the colors but this it fit oh yeah this is nice the braid that I have is um their heirloom ornamental in their Gotland this is from 2019 or 2018 right back the last the second one I got this year at Rhinebeck is mud bogs and moonshine in their Wensleydale. I do believe I have spun Wensleydale from them before. It feels familiar. Oh, and this just also, you know, I bet if I could do a DK weight in this, it would go really well with this. Like a low contrast color work thing or like a lace panel. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, I might have to do that. I'm so, like, I kind of have a spinning bug after this weekend because uh, we, a couple people brought their um, eel wheels. We have a mini one and a full size one that people brought. So I kind of, I kind of have a spinning bug again. I really want to, I want to get Edgar out. I want to get my plyology wheel out. I want to get the eel out again. I really love the plyology for plying. So these are the two I got on Saturday. The other, uh, is that it? We just, we just did a lot of walking around and like petting and Jake being asked if he was there to buy sheep and it was just amazing. I did at the end of the day because I was searching for yarn for that sweater. Um, it was a lot of like going into booths, squishing stuff, taking pictures and just getting an idea because I need a sport weight for the striped sweater. Uh, at the end of the day, I did find my contrast color. So the center stripe, this book is just so. So like the gold stripe on her, the center stripe is going to be this color for me. And this is a Coopworth. Uh, it is a fingering weight, but it's a very thin one. So I'm just going to hold the double by Bobolink Yarn. I've never bought their yarn before. I, th I must have passed them so many times at Rhinebeck. I feel like this year I got to go into booths that I've never been in before. And I don't know if that's because like it just wasn't as crowded or because the booths were more spread out, you could see into them a lot better. No idea. But I feel like I did a lot of shopping at new to me places. Uh, it is, Maybe, uh, I don't know if the colorway name is Snug Valley or that's just the base, but Snug Valley Coopworth. Uh, 220 yards of a fingering weight. I think I need like a hundred yards of a uh, sport weight for the gold. I should have, I should be fine. If not, they do have a website and I can try and get some more. Oh, I just love, it's just, it's a very me color. It's a hundred percent a me color. So this was the last thing we got on Saturday before we headed home and that night we did de-stash and show and tell and got barbecue and listened to Jake roast the barbecue <laughs> and uh, just kind of have a really chill night. Uh, yeah, that was Saturday, so Sunday. 
All right, let's, um, on to Sunday. Sunday. Okay, Sunday, the final day of the weekend. My Sunday sweater was the sweater number 12 by My Favorite Things in Earl Grey Fiber Co. Um, I believe it's her yak base. I can't find the ball bands anywhere. I just spent like 20 minutes looking for them. Uh, but the copper is Copper Boon. And then I believe it's either Gunpowder Sock or the gray is Gunpowder. I could, I have to check all my show notes from previous things. Uh, I knit it on a size four needles. Again, I knit the smallest size. It's like a, a broken rib, so it's very stretchy. And it, oh, it, I love the way it fits so much. It's just, oh, it's so good. Um, I did the three quarter length sleeve because I usually push my sleeves up. Uh, and I don't think I modified anything on this one. I am pairing it with a um, pleated skirt that I got at like Goodwill or the thrift store years ago for my Hufflepuff uh, uniform when the Harry Potter movies were coming out. You gotta bring it over, bud. You can do it. I just watched you do it. Are you mad at me? Um... <laughs> I just brought Audrey over to go meet a puppy who needed to be socialized, but Iron can be a little bit much, so I just brought Audrey and now he's mad at me. But yeah, this is uh this was so much fun. And this is actually part of my um the four aesthetics that I wanted to make for the year. This is my Persephone outfit. So I have completed one of those. And the Edwardian walking skirt is half of one. So <laughs> I just have to complete the shirt and I'm done with two aesthetics for the year. I don't remember what the other ones are. I have to check. But yeah, Sunday. Sunday uh, was the last day of Rhinebeck. So uh, I got some things that I definitely wanted and then there were some surprises. So on the list was uh, sweater. It's the bone, I thought he broke something. <laughs> On the list was yarn for the striped sweater. What is it actually called? Sweater? Kinsin? Kinsan? The Kinsan sweater? Kinsan. Kinsan. Kinsan sweater. So for the body of the sweater, I got two skeins of this Romney Merino blend. It's a 50-50 sport weight um, blend from, I got it at the Foster Sheep Farm booth. Uh, I believe it's the Stillwater Farm. But just this delicious like gray chocolatey brown. So this is going to be the main body of the sweater. And then I went over to Sawkill and picked up this, I believe it's just Merino. Just Merino. Oh, okay. So it's 40% saw kill farm wool and 60% uh, domestic merino in the light gray. And this is, does the base have a name? It does not. But uh, also a sport weight. So uh, it will be... Where'd he come? Main color stripe, middle stripe, and then gray again. So I'm super excited. I think they are going to be such a good sweater. I can't wait to cast this on. I don't know what I'm going to cast it on, but I want it. I want it now. I'm having a striped moment, I think. I think stripes are happening for me. So that was the yarn I got. Uh, I also went to the Matter Root booth because I love her bags. As you know, I am a huge fan. And she had these tartan sock bags with the wax canvas bottom. And there were only a couple left. So uh, a friend and I each got one. And it's got the knit stitches on the inside. Uh, I, again, for somebody who has not been knitting socks, it just, I had to. I love her bags so much. I just, I just couldn't walk away from them. I didn't want to leave them alone. Come here, bud. Do you need me to lift the, the wire for you? Uh, yeah, so I think this was my last Rhinebeck purchase. I think it was. Yeah, so after uh, this, I went up to Hudson for the afternoon to hang out with some friends. And uh, we... 
uh, got tattoos as you know one does on Brian Beck. So this is also what I acquired here, and I will tag the artist, um, the uh, his Instagram. So there we go. We got matchy, matchy, matchy flowers, and I love them. Um, and this is the one I got the other week. This is a terrible angle. I think in the next uh, video I will just do a tattoo tour because then he will be less, he will be, this one, he'll be healed. He's now starting to itch. Thank you. Oh, that was your face. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. And I don't know how long any of this is going to be. So uh, I'm also, this is the most covered, uh, outfit I could be wearing to show you all my tattoos. But yeah, so that's what I got on, uh, so that was part one of the Hudson Adventure on Sunday. Uh, I also, we also, uh, I did come home with bread, but I ate it all, so I can't show you that. But we did go to this little, like, apothecary, tea, witchy, floral shop called The Quiet Botanist, and I picked up some um, sorry, there's a siren, so if the dogs go. This tea, it's like a fall sleepy time tea. I mean, the jar is to die for, but it looks like it's got some, it's chamomile, uh, looks like rose petals, maybe some, mint in there. I haven't had it yet, but it smells like, just really like, warm and earthy and like a little bit floral. I'm super excited for it. And I uh, did get a dried bouquet because they were so cute. I will show, uh, I'll be putting a clip in it because I put it in my little cloche glass thing that I use for uh, vending. Usually I put like the show color in there, but uh, I'm not gonna have any more show colors until probably the next Indian Tangled. So right now it's just holding that until I get a nice little vase for it. And I did grab, uh, it's like a single use flower tea. So you just put this little bundle in your cup with the water and it's just like so cute and witchy. And they had just uh, like dried herbs and flower ingredients. You could make your own herb bouquet or you could buy a pre-made one. They had like soap, lotion, um, stuff for smudging, incense, candles. Like it was just the cutest little shop. I want to build it on The Sims and then move into it. Maybe see if they're hiring. And they do online orders too. So I am considering buying more of the dried bouquets because um, I'm thoroughly enjoying the dried floral decor at, at this moment. You're gonna run over Audrey. No, Iron, this way. Go. So that was Sunday and uh, yeah, that's everything I got, I think. Uh, we did pick up some soap, some hot sauce, um, a case of Hedda, mold wine, and beef jerky, you know, the, the other food Rhinebecky stuff. It was just so good. It was such a good weekend and uh, I hope everybody can have a lovely weekend like that at least once a year, whether it be Rhinebeck or your own Rhinebeck, or your own little knitting festival with friends, or by yourself if you don't want anyone talking to you or touching you. I just, I wish that weekend for everybody. So now we are back home, we are prepping for New England Fiber Festival, and then we're gonna get ready for Vlogmas. We're doing Vlogmas this year, and I'm so excited. I can't wait. Oh, I also got, um, Frand gifts. These things are so cute. And they are by um, Sunrise Grove Knittery. I just had to share these because they are just everything. Like, look at this little handle. Yeah, so that was Rhinebeck and Indian Tangled. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to talk about is what I have been reading because I am very behind on my books because I haven't really done a video in a long time and I wanted to catch you guys up on where I am. Thank you, bud. So let me pull that up. The only other thing I've been doing since Rhinebeck is getting ready for New England and everything I was doing before Rhinebeck was getting ready for Rhinebeck. So I'm going to start with the Vine Witch 
I don't know when, what like last book I talked about on the channel. So I did read The Vine Witch by Leanne G. Smith and then I did a book box on it. Hold on. Wait for it. So I did read uh, The Vine Witch by Leanne Dee Smith and then I did the book box on it which was a ton of fun to put together. Like it was just so good to put a little witchy box together. I did read The Glamorist and The Conjurer which are the second and third book in that trilogy. It's highly recommend. It's like turn of the century French wine witchy but there's also like a witch who doesn't really know if she wants to be a witch and a genie and like her story and she just ties in all the characters throughout the entire series so well so like they're all included but it doesn't feel forced like they just keep getting pulled back to each other very good um I don't I must have gotten this far I also read Neon Gods by Katie Roberts which was uh I was planning on doing like a Hades and Persephone video and like all the retellings that I've been enjoying but I basically just read them all anyway so uh Neon Gods by Katie Roberts is a Hades and Persephone retelling but in like a modern city and then I read The Beast by Katie Roberts which is a Beast Gaston Bell retelling also in a modern city same universe but just like a different section they are not for people like under the age of 25 but they were so good uh I then moved on to Lady of Brooksgrave Manor by Catherine Moon who is adorable and also makes candles and that is a reverse harem I think it's going to be a trilogy. The second book comes out next year and I'm very excited. Uh, I brought it back down to Cress from the Lunar Chronicles. Did I tell you I finished the Lunar Chronicles? I finished the Lunar Chronicles. I didn't read like the book about um, the main villain in the series, but I'm good. I'm good where I left it off. Lunar Chronicles the Lunar Chronicles was very good. It's a YA like retelling of Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel. And I don't know what Winter's story is from, but it was great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and then I read the entire Librarian Coven series, which was a dark academic witchy reverse harem in which this woman goes to a university to become a librarian, finds out that she's a very specific type of witch called a scribe. And just kind of like accepts that her coven is Isaac, Callum, and Aiden, who are all professors at the university. And just kind of like, uh, it's good. It like, it goes into like, it's just so, it's like dark, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Must protect Callum at all, also Isaac. Must protect them at all costs. Highly enjoy. Highly enjoy. Um, what, who is this one? I then, uh, I feel like this is familiar, but I'm just going to keep going. I read A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. It was my first Victoria Lee book. I feel like this is a very old, like I read this in August, so I feel like I'm repeating myself with these things. I'm sorry if I did. It is a dark academic sapphic, um, girl who is back at a boarding school after taking a year off because her girlfriend mysteriously died and she was writing a thesis about the witches that or like supposed witches that formed the school and also died under mysterious circumstances like hundreds of years ago the school was founded by like one of the salem witch trial witches and um this year while she's like trying to move on from that uh, a writer in her grade moves into the house with her and like won't let her escape that part of her it's very good it just it was so well done. It was so good. I, like I, I didn't, ex I, I expected what the ending was going to be, but the way she wrapped it up was just, it was great. I finished Lunar Chronicles. I then listened to The Lost Apothecary by 
Sarah Penner. That one was also really good. It was the story of um, two women in like the 16, I think the 1600s who were working at an apothecary that were witches and then a woman who was in France in like modern times who just left I think she just left her husband or like left her fiance at the altar because they she found out that he was cheating on her and then she just kind of like dives into the story of figuring out like what this apothecary was like she stumbles a, upon the doorway and then tries to figure it out and she was going to school oh no it's in London it's in London um like she was gonna go to school to be like an archivist and then her fiance was like don't do that like my job's great you don't need to work so she's kind of getting back into like the, back into like the research part of her life it was very it was really well done I it kind of like it followed the timeline really well so like as you're figuring out what happened to these two women in the past with the main character whose name I have completely forgotten you're also watching like the next chapter is what actually happened. So it's it was really interesting. I think it was a book of the month book too. I then read Haunting Adeline, which was not about ghosts at all. Um, it's a mafia romance. It's a dark romance. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, yeah. And then... <laughs> To balance that out, I read That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon, which was just a super fun fluff smut. I needed to read something on the plane where a cinnamon farmer named Cinnamon saves a demon and then goes on an adventure with him and they fall in love. It's just, it's delightful. It was delightful. 10 out of 10. Uh, the last book that I finished, no, the second to last book I finished was Gothicana by Runix. And that was a uh, dark academic, another like, um, girl gets accepted to like a boarding school, uh, accepted to a college on a mountain, which is like this old castle. She gets warned that there's like a mysterious professor who's probably cursed and somebody mysteriously died the year before and everything's haunted and it's always witches. Um, very good. I, the ending was too happy for me. I, for everything that they were leading up to, it could have been a lot less happy on the ending. It just wrapped up too neatly for my liking, but it was a good read. It was good. It was, um, yeah, <laughs> that one was professor student romance like forbidden romance kind of thing uh but up until the end I really enjoyed it like the, just the last two chapters where they wrapped everything up I was like no 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 this is this is too neat I uh the last book I finished it was promises pomegranates and promises and I'm forgetting the name and that is a modern Hades and Persephone mafia romance retelling where uh they're not Hades and Persephone, like it's just they refer to themselves as them. Like, I can't even remember their names. <laughs> I'm the worst book reader. Uh, the girl, like, uh, it's the girl's the daughter of like one of the big Boston Mafia people. And she sleeps with like his henchman, Dr. Death, who calls himself Hades. So like she got a pomegranate tattoo. And then the beginning of the book, uh, he tricks her into marrying him like on her wedding day to this other dude. He kills the guy and then marries her. So it's forced proximity, forced marriage, enemies, like begrudging enemies to lovers kind of thing. Uh, smut. Yeah. So that was, <laughs> that was the last book I finished. And then I had to uh, stop my Kindle Unlimited account because I needed to work on books I actually have. So right now I am currently working on Crescent City by Sarah J Moss. The new book comes out in February. I have to pre-order it still. And uh, by the time this come out, this comes out, I should have already announced I'm going to do Crescent City as the net, the last, I'm going to do Crescent City as the last book box for this year in anticipation for the new one coming out. Uh, because I'm just 
I'm kind of ex I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I am. I want to know. I have so many questions that I need answered, basically, and I just really want need to like see more rune in my life. So that's really it. I'm excited for rune. Yeah, so that's what I'm currently reading. I have made no strides on my V.E. Schwab book at all. I need, I know I need to get into that. And my TBR is out of control. So yeah, that's what I've been reading. It has been a lot of Sims. Um, yeah, I'm addicted. I started the Not So Berry Challenge. I'm about to finish all the requirements for like the first generation. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I've been up to. A lot of reading, um, a lot of show prep, and we're diving right back into show prep. I'm hoping to get some spinning done. I'm probably gonna take it pretty easy this December. It has been an insane couple of months, but I just wanted to make sure that I shared what I made and what I got at Ryback for this year. With that, thank you so much for watching, for supporting the shop, for supporting the podcast, and we will see you next time.